Hey guys, it's Jim and I'm back with another video. Uh, in this one, I'm gonna take this photo, which is an HDR that I built in Aurora, uh, but no edits to the photo in Aurora, and I'm gonna adjust it in Luminar. Um, I use Aurora for all my HDRs. It's by far the best out there. And many times I spend the in, uh, entire time in Aurora just editing the photo from start to finish in Aurora. Um, but once Luminar came out, I've also been experimenting with uh, making adjustments to photos that I uh, or HDR photos that I create in Aurora and then take them over to Luminar and edit them or stylize them. And so I thought this was a good example of some of the things you can do. Um, you can actually probably do very similar things to what I do to this photo in Aurora. I just wanted to demonstrate how I would handle this shot um, that was taken one evening in London and uh, demonstrate how I would edit that in uh, Luminar. So this is a base HDR, three exposures, blended. Um, one of them was really long, so I got sort of streaky clouds. And as you can see, the lights of the building here, this is at uh, Covent Garden in London. Uh, the lights really just uh, cast a really yellow-green kind of hue, which is not what it looked like. And even if it did look like it, I'd want to change it anyway because I, I don't like that color. So I'm going to just go grab a bunch of filters and work through it. So uh, all of this is going to be on a single layer. So I'm just going to go through and grab a bunch of filters that I love. Uh, these are some of my favorites. So I got clarity. I got uh, color temperature. Uh, I get color balance a lot. I love that one. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of dramatic. I'm going to add a little bit of image radiance. I'm going to get Orton because it's just so cool. And of course, saturation and vibrance. I use that all the time just because I like color pop. I think it's beautiful. Uh, split color warmth. Maybe you saw me using that in my previous video. Um, I like that quite a bit. And uh, I think I might be go with tone. So that's probably enough. That's what, eight or so filters. That's probably about normal. Um, I'm not going to use any of my presets here. I, I want to show you how I, I just build one from the ground up. Well, not build a preset, but just build the look of the photo, which I guess technically I could turn into a preset. Anyway, I'll shut up and, and get started. So clarity, uh, I'm just going to do these in the order in which they appear, which is, of course, alphabetical because I just grabbed them out of the list that way. Um, I'm going to start with that, the color temperature. I think I'm going to drop that a little bit because it's really too yellow and uh, I want to get rid of some of that look and do something more like that. And if you look, I mean, already it looks way better, right? So that's all yellow and green and just the color temp alone has made a huge difference. Um, so I'm, I'm already quite happy. Uh, color balance. I'm going to get into the mid-tones here and I'm going to move these guys around a little bit. I'm going to do something like that and then maybe go this way with the magenta greens and then that way with the blues and uh, uh, you know get away from the yellows get more to the blues so something like that and, and I should say I'm going for more of a reddish kind of uh, tint sort of to this photo as opposed to the yellow but if you can see there that to that a huge difference and if you're not using color balance I highly recommend it uh, you can use uh, or make these adjustments, shadows, midtones, or highlights. You can do all three if you want. I just chose midtones here, but it allows you to basically move the colors between the cyan and red, the magenta green, or the yellow and blue for each of these shadows, midtones, or highlights. So it's a great filter. I use it all the time. Absolutely love it. Uh, dramatic, I'm going to bump that up a little bit because I want to create a little bit more of a dramatic photo. That's brought up some of the detail, which I love. Uh, image radiance, I just like this because it's a cool look. Gives it a little bit more of a moody, kind of dreamy feel. And so does Orton. So I'm going to go give it a little bit of Orton here. Maybe something like uh, that. And I'm going to brighten it a little bit. It's getting a little too dark. And that's one of the things about uh, Orton and Image Radiance. You start adding these things and stacking them. It does make the image a little bit darker. So I love that you have the brightness uh, here in Orton that you can play with. Okay, saturation, vibrance. I'm going to do a little bit less saturation, actually. Maybe give it a little bump in vibrance, but I'm going to take the saturation down. I don't want it to get too red. I just want it to be a kind of a dramatic night shot. Okay, split color warmth. I'm going to take the warm colors and take them that way. And I'm going to take the cool colors uh, that way as well. Uh, basically, I'm cooling off the entire image because I've taken both the warm and the cool. But the reason I chose this filter is because you can do them separately so I can do different amounts. And, and so instead of just doing color temperature and doing it all the way, uh, where's that, all the way to the left, like I did up there, I added this in, allows me to adjust the warm and color, uh, warm and cool colors 
separately in terms of their temperature. So I like that quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go with something like that, maybe a little bit less there. Uh, and then tone here, I'm going to bump the exposure a little bit that way, just slightly darker, but then um, smart tone, I'm going to move this way quite a bit. And, and again, I'm going for a little bit of a dramatic night shot. You can see what I've done to the photo with that. It's just darkened it a little. I use smart tone a lot. I just absolutely love it. I say that a lot about these filters, but uh, smart tones is really good. It's basically an intelligent tone, right? So if I go to the left to darken the image, it'll darken the spots that are pretty bright, but it won't really darken very much the ones that are already dark. And the same with uh, going to the right. If I take smart tone to the right to sort of brighten the image, it'll brighten the parts that are dark, but it won't overly brighten the parts that are already bright. So it's smart, right? I love it. I think it's a great filter. And uh, I think the intelligence it, it has is, is very handy. Um, so I think that's about all I would do to this photo. Um, I, I really think that's about it. So let me show you where we started. Yeah, ouch, right? So you see that, and, and you look at that night shot, and it's just really just yellow and green, and it's these lights that are giving off such a glow. And some of it's a long exposure. Uh, this guy picks up some of this city lights and the haze that's there. Anyway, I wanted to get rid of a lot of that, and so I feel like I did. I, I feel like I'm successful in, in converting the image to more what I remember it being like, uh, but also just to get rid of some of those really ugly tones and colors. So let me show you one more time. There's the ugly yellow, which is just horrible, and boom, there's a much more, I think, interesting, uh, certainly a bit dramatic, but uh, a more pleasing uh, sort of color scheme in this photo. Um, and whenever I shoot night shots in the city, especially if you have one that's a really long exposure like I did with this set of brackets, um, a lot of these city lights, these halogen lights, they just pick up some of those yellow kind of green tones. And uh, you, can, you can fix that a lot of ways, but I chose to fix that here in Luminar today with all these different filters and edits that I did. And I highly recommend you just get in there and experiment with these sort of filters because there's a lot you can do and uh, they all have a different impact. So. Just play around, experiment. I find a lot of these things are complementary, and you might end up, you know, converting a, a night shot that you might have thought when you first did the HDR, or even if it's a single exposure, you might look at it and think, you know, ooh, um, which is what I did here, right? So let me show you that one more time. That's kind of a ooh, right? I just don't like it. Um, so I might have built that HDR and looked at it and said, you know, I don't even want to mess with this. That's an ugly mess. The shot didn't work. I'll try something else, right? I might have done that, but you take it into Luminar and boom, you get something that you like out of it and that's the power of Luminar. So uh, that's it for this video, my friends. If you have questions, let me know. Thanks again. I'll see you next time and adios.